Uh, the films don't have a meaning which then gets drawn. The films come out of a need to make an image, an impulse to make a film, and the meaning emerges over the months of the making of the film. Um, so the only meaning they have in advance is the need for the film to exist. Until the end of high school, I had no desire to go into cinema. I went to university to study theoretical physics and cosmology, interested in the nature of being and, and, and time and what it means to exist, how, in what sense we exist. And gradually I discovered those were philosophical questions, not precisely physical questions, they were metaphysical questions, and how we perceive the questions themselves is de de uh, determined by our experience. It's maybe a, a longer story, but at some point I came across filmmaking as a way of exploring and as how we experience the world, and especially non-fiction filmmaking, as a way of creating a kind of life practice of exploring not just the universe, but how we perceive and feel ourselves in the universe, how our subjectivity shapes the way we, the way we know the universe and know existence and, and know ourselves. Someone in our high school brought a video camera, one of the first ones. They were called uh, porta packs. Uh, they were uh, the tape, you know, it was a tape machine. You had to thread it and, and it was, uh, weighed 35 pounds. So it was he very heavy. And then the camera weighed about 10 pounds. And you put it on your shoulder and you walked around with this thing looking through this little, very primitive eyepiece. And uh, I took one look into that. I went to a workshop in my university, finally. But this was actually high school first when they showed us this camera. And I had never seen this before. And he came and set it up. This man came into our classroom, set it up. I looked at it, and he pushed this button. And this plastic box, all of a sudden, phew, light appeared, you know? And it was this blue light. It wasn't just white. It was blue. And I looked at that, and I thought, oh. I almost got nervous. I remember shaking almost after they turned it off. And then that was the end of my high school year. So we had the summer vacation. And then we went, I went to university, Syracuse. The first thing I did when I got there was I looked in the, uh, the list of uh, you know, extra things you could do on the campus. And one of the things was video workshop. And I went right there. I always perform in relation to the frame of the camera, what the camera saw, that frame and that space. So it's a combination of all these different things the content being what is female, and then um, the picture that you're making, the picture in the frame, and how do you use that space. For instance, if there are figures in a painting, the figures are enacting a kind of, um, you know, tableau vivant in Renaissance painting, say, which I was also interested in. And then in film, of course, the figures are enacting um, a situation. And so for me, the image is, is what I work with. And the image is made partly by the person in the image manipulating objects, making drawings, performing actions. And that's the way I think of that. The project Station of Station was really kind of made out of necessity. Um, it was a project that I, I developed a few years ago, and I, um, I, I felt frustrated with how mediums were so separated, how you know, art might be over here, and music, the, the culture around music is here, literature, cinema, and all these dialogues were kind of um, isolated and ghettoized in a way, yet that never happens. When you sit down and have uh, you know, dinner at a wood table with a friend, the conversation erupts about all these things at once. So I, I felt like a, a kind of necessity to do something about that. And um, I, I think in, in some kind of freaky activist way, I wanted to do something that was um, artist-driven, that was um, outside of the uh, traditional structures of the museum or the gallery, or for the musician, that might be the music industry or the stage. And I thought, you know, if we could do something where there's two principles, one is constant motion and nomadicism, and the other is a complete 
ignorance of the separation between these mediums. But it's more a service I'm doing. It's, I'm not sure if it's art, but uh, to use electronics, uh, give them other meanings and free them from uh, certain forms. The rectangle, we only invented that it's easier to change the content. It actually makes no sense that uh, uh, our screens, our computers, our TVs are rectangle. It's only because it's more practical. I'm interested how somebody perceives different, if you can relax, if, if that helps for a deeper contemplation. And especially in art context, where the big difference to TV is that the visitor brings the body to a collective space and then take these bodies serious. You know, we, we, we like designing the, the movies to be native to multiple different platforms and exhibitions, ways of exhibiting and, and screening. So it's like you, when you show a movie in a movie theater, you, you bring your knowledge of like understanding that a movie has a beginning and an end and that like you're watching scenes and you're, and you're watching character development. And so you put that onto the movie and whether it's there or not, it, it, it emerges because you, I feel like I really want like the people to read the movies and to be like ambitious about reading them. And then in the in the museum space, it was like an opportunity to create some sort of like a sculptural frame or a container that poetically resonates with with the movie, sort of like lubricates your own psychological like landscape that you're going through while experiencing a movie. I very much like the documentary approach to filmmaking that's something that you put up your camera and you start it and whatever happens in front of it happens once and it's almost miraculous that you can catch it and that you can view it again and that whatever happens the bird the, the dog that crosses the street and the clouds that move it is a unique event and sort of in a strange way almost holy that you can do that and that you shouldn't interfere with it. I could, for years I didn't know how to say cut because I felt it was not allowed to cut the flow of time. And eventually I learned to do that. But, but then it was, the flow of time was, then went, went on different ways because you could add one shot to the other. But you still had to respect time. And I also felt that any form of manipulation was was interfering with the sanctity of the process. So that's why my films have always been kind of slow or have respected the unity of space and time. Tapping into people's own images and mem memories is, is really powerful and VR can do that. You know, because you have a choice. You're not looking at a rectangle, somebody's idea of where you're going to look. You're, you've got a whole lot of choices. You can spend the whole time looking there or, you know, you're, you have this agency. And this is a, this is a strange work of art that not, is not for every artist either. A lot of writers, for example, that would be a nightmare. You know, no, I want you to look at my point of view. I'm the writer here. No, so you have to like, <laughs> you know, get a little bit looser and kind of go, well, what do you think of that? So that's what I like about it. You know the reason I really love the stars is that we cannot hurt them. I mean, there is a certain selectivity of what I am attracted to, to, to film, to record, to tape, uh, that I am I'm not attracted to, uh, to anything that one could uh, vaguely and uh, maybe um, superficially referred as ugly or horrible or, uh, or uh, evil <laughs> or use any of those words. 
I'm more attracted to those situations, uh, images, uh, which again, superficially, one would describe as more uh, happy uh, uh, events, hap happy situations. If you watch television, go through various channels for one hour, and I bet you will have bad, horrible dreams that night. So that's, uh, I don't want that. And as a whole, you're an escapist. No, or you can call it me a moralist. Um, I would define myself as a, a filmmaker, as someone who has uh, chiefly used archival footage and archival footage that's in various states of degradation um, to make new films, and um, usually new films with original music. And I work in a, a different way than most filmmakers in that I um, give my collaborators equal standing as me in the production. Um, I cut to their work, in fact, um, so in some ways they, they precede me. Um, and uh, it brings the music, I think, to a, a heightened level in, in the film. It's, um, it's not background music in, in a way, it's working in tandem with the image. Uh, it's not a way a lot of filmmakers like to work. Filming a, somebody who is wrapping a present for somebody, it's very simple. You buy something and you, it's somebody's birthday, you want to give and you get and you're wrapping. But you see, when you do that, the act of wrapping a present for a friend or unwrapping a present that you received from a friend, is a, is, is a ritual, is a certain in their intensity of feeling. This moment is a, in a small way, is a unique uh, moment, and you do it in a certain very special way. Now, to catch what there is in that moment, that's what I'm interested in. That's what the challenge is, because that's the most difficult thing to do.